I just want to start and go and go and go the longest amount of time that I can draw before the tide comes in and washes everything away. My name is Jim Dunham and I draw in the sand. To draw in the sand, it's a balance between a mental game and a physical. They're both equally important. I started drawing in the sand a little more than 20 years ago. I was walking along the beach one day. It just came to me to use it as a canvas. I just put my finger in the sand and made a giant fish. I became really, really obsessed with it. I left behind the world both of surfing and the job as a chef, and then I just put everything into drawing in the sand. There was almost no one in the whole world that, that did this kind of thing. I've drawn in the sand around the world. Australia, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Russia. I mean, occasionally it's a mission, but I'm also in places where, oh, there's a nice patch of sand. I think I'll go do something there. The one that was 10 miles in circumference in the desert on a dry lake, it's a Guinness World Record and largest art. I've walked as much as 30 miles in one day, which means about seven or eight hours of walking. I like the stick probably the best because I like to come down to the beach with nothing. The tools are sitting there on the beach, sticks to choose from, and I'll do my composition, do a nice big drawing, and then I'll throw the stick away. I'm down with nothing and leave with nothing. For me, that's the most fulfilling choice of how to do it. Drawing the sand is the ultimate of in the moment, and I want to finish when the tide is about to destroy the drawing. This is going to change every day. Anything I do down there is going to be gone, and every time I'm going to have a big, huge place to try something new. Making drawings on land on quite a large scale is something people have been doing for thousands of years. I'm Simon Beck and I make drawings in the snow. It started as a bit of fun, but gradually it's taken over my life. A ballpark estimate of footsteps, about 5,000 steps in an hour. A big drawing, two hours measuring, eight hours work. You're looking at 40,000 steps. I started doing it as an easier alternative to hiking up the mountain when I wanted some exercise. You're starting with a, a drawing on a piece of paper, or else a drawing in your mind. Just treating it a bit like an orienteering map. You're just going a certain distance in a certain direction, determining distances by counting paces. It's a very physical exercise. It's equivalent to a long day's walking in the hills when you make one of these big drawings. I'm just about the only person in the world doing anything like it. This colorful spot has a dark past. Las Pamitas was once a dangerous place with clashes between rival gangs. But the city government launched and funded a project called Pachuca Paints Itself to turn the community around. The painting itself involved participation from all of the households. 
They painted over 200 houses using 5,000 gallons of paint. These individually painted houses combined to make one beautiful rainbow design, inspired by Pachuca's nickname, La Bella Rosa, or the beautiful breezy city. The aim of the project was to bring a sense of liveliness and livability back to the city. The Ministry of Planning and Evaluation of the city of Pachuca has noted that the crime rate in the city has decreased since the mural was painted. With my work, I want to create pieces that engage community together and allow us to really celebrate something positive. And I love seeing how the action of crocheting connects people together. I'm Oleg, I'm an artist, and crochet is my technique. I was raised in a communist Poland. We have very limited access to any culture and any public art. In 2000, I came to New York, I was 22. I had a backpack full of dreams and like no money. And I was asked to design a costume for a dancer. I couldn't afford buying a sewing machine. So I came up with the idea of using the crochet hook to connect fabric together. And after this was like explosion. I was crocheting gigantic installation right away. Crocheting is a process of making fabric with one continuous loop. I travel around the world. Every time I go, all my projects somehow relate to the community I'm working with. Our Pink House is the project I created in Avesta in Sweden. This town accepted a lot of refugees from Syria and Ukraine. In India, we were crocheting a new skin for homeless shelter. Probably most people know my work because of the Wall Street Bull. I crocheted pink camouflage as they respond to the recent market crash that happened in 2008. Currently I'm working on a project all over across the USA. I want to create a mural in every state that portrays women that change American history. I always create squares or rectangles sometimes. And then when I have enough pieces, I crochet piece by piece together with the help of the local people who want to be part of this action. So first I put this, I go through this, and then just go on a leaf and install it. People want to be part of something. And I love seeing that hunger that people have to create something so positive. It's not just the image, but the power that every single loop is made by somebody's hand. え、田んぼ跡はね、稲の色の異なる稲、7種類を使って田んぼに地柄を絵柄を描くということが田んぼ。絵があるんですよ。来年はどういうような題材ですか。決まっ
くてもならないそれが決まった後職員が役場の職員がですねやらの道印をつけていく田んぼの中にここのここの部分にはどの色の色を植えるここの部分にはどの色を植えるとその後田植えというような作業になります参加者が今年は1300人、えー、題材の,の総案が決まってからですね実際に田植えということまでの期間はねほぼ3ヶ月ぐらい利用します最初始めた時のデザインといいますとね岩木さんとその下に青森県の銘柄米なかなか大変でありましたよ最初は簡単に言わなくて田んぼ後に人が来るのも毎年毎年デザインが変わるでしょ今年のあのデザインはね神話これは神話から山田のおろちと諏訪の尾身こと取り上げました第二田んぼ跡の方は童話から桃太郎の鬼退治を取り上げております我々最初にやった時はまさかこうなるとはとてもじゃないが思われません東京行っても大阪行っても田舎建て村っていうだけであ田んぼ跡の村今はそういう認識が全国に広まっています田舎建て村の人はねこの田んぼ跡についてはどこ行っても自慢しています。